Hey guys, I'm back and I know this took a while, but here's the thing. I never expected the part one video to get to 1.4 million views. I mean, that's insane. I had 12 subscribers before that video. I'm super grateful for all the support, but at the same time, it bugs me that I had a few mistakes in that video, things that I kind of regret. So thank you all so much for the suggestions and for educating me in a few areas. The next upgrades video, which is now part three, that will be uploaded in five days. So make sure you're subscribed. The reason I'm making that the part three now is because the video was getting kind of long and I wanted to give you guys an update first. You see, I've had this printer for almost a year now and not all the upgrades and mods from the first video worked out. Let's start with the bed handles. They actually broke. Just a few weeks in and I was pretty sad. I really liked that design. Then I also took off the Z-axis stabilizer and the knob because a lot of these 3D printers are actually designed for the threaded rod to be unconstrained. So thank you to Key Implant for sharing Key Implant for sharing Alex Kennis's video with me. This guy explains the reasons for this very well. I'll link that below. And I also added some heat sinks to my Raspberry Pi 3 because apparently the Pi 3 heats up a lot more running Octopi compared to the older models. It's a lot faster, but I definitely recommend adding some heat sinks. There are also a few changes I made to the actual mods. All right, so first thing, a lot of you guys really liked this light design. I got these LED lights a couple years ago on eBay and they don't actually sell them anymore. So I decided to redesign it with these newer lights. They now sell these on Amazon and eBay. The design is basically the same. They're just a little bit more compact and rectangular instead. then printed these new brackets. And here's a tip. Usually when the glass bed cools, the prints automatically release themselves. But if you don't want to wait, you can actually take an air duster can, flip it upside down, and this instantly cools the glass around your prints and releases them. Unfortunately, there was a logo on these lights and I don't like that very much. Alright, now I got a bit tired of the red and black color scheme on this thing and I really liked the black and white look that I had on my LD2R so I decided to reprint all the major red pieces on this printer in white to match that. For the bed leveling knobs, I also found 3D models for similar ones and I was able to print those in white. And then with some M4 nuts, they are good to go. And these printed ones are actually almost like half the weight of these original aluminum ones, so that's probably good. All right, so aside from these changes, everything else actually held up very nicely. And I'm still constantly impressed by the fact that this is a $200 printer. I mean, I spent $140 on upgrades in the first video, but still, for $340, that's still pretty good, I think. All right, so in the next video, I'm gonna be adding another 15 upgrades and mods to this thing, but I wanted to do something before we get to that. I want to answer some frequently asked questions. All right, so I am in a long distance relationship with Creality. They sometimes send me free stuff and I am in their affiliate program. Now, everything you're about to hear though are my own honest opinion and they're not paying me to say anything. And I did buy this 3D printer like months before this whole relationship even formed. So I just wanted to be completely transparent with all of you. Back to the Q&A. Starting with the big one. Why did I choose the Ender 3? Well, I've already kind of talked about it in the part one video, but it's completely because of the community around this printer. I mean, I don't think there's a single other printer brand out there that has been as hacked or modified as much as the Ender 3 has. I've seen people convert these to be direct drive, Core XY, convert it to print larger, print with nylon, and even chocolate or frostings, used as a pizza dough heater, quick release interchangeable tool heads, Convert it to do simple CNC milling, laser engraving, plotting, tilted setups to do automated printing, 
and even a foldable setup for easy storage. And the list goes on and on. People have done some insane things to this $200 printer. And sure, if you're an expert, technically speaking, you can make these upgrades and mods to just about any open source 3D printer brand out there. But if you're an amateur like myself who can't quite figure it out on your own and you want to learn these things by following existing tutorials and documentation from others in the community, well then the Ender 3 is a great option for you. I mean, there are just so many awesome people in this community sharing their knowledge and experiments. And if any of those guys are watching this video, you guys are beautiful. All right, the next one is why did I choose the Ender 3 Pro? Why not the Ender 3 V2 or just the stock Ender 3? Honestly, it's because when I bought the Ender 3 Pro, the Ender 3 V2 was sold out. It looked like a sweet printer though, and I actually just recently bought one for my dad, and I'm pretty jealous, it looks great. Another question I get very often is why spend the time and money to upgrade this printer when I can just buy a better printer, a more expensive one? It's a great question, but here's the thing. Even if I was to spend thousands of dollars on the printer, I will probably still find a way to modify it in some way. I always end up finding a way to customize and just upgrade any of my tools, no matter how expensive they are. But better also depends a lot on your needs, right? Sure, it might make sense for you, but for me, when I first started all this, I wasn't even sure if I was gonna be 3D printing that much. It was just a hobby. So the fact that it was such an affordable machine made it a lot easier for me to make that choice. But if you're certain that you're gonna be 3D printing all the time and you have a higher budget for this hobby or potentially even business, well then sure, definitely go and buy a better printer. There are definitely some expensive ones out there that are pretty good. The Ender 3 Pro, definitely not a perfect machine. It's kind of like building your own PC. Sure, if you have the budget and you know exactly what you want, you can just go to Best Buy and buy a pre-built PC that performs very, very well. But on the other hand, the Ender 3 Pro, it's like you kind of get this base machine that's super cheap, works fairly decent right out of the box, but then over time, if you want to, you can start spending more money on parts and upgrades to make it perform better based on your needs, if you want to. And I really like that aspect about this machine. It kind of gives you some options. Another question I get very often is why the glass bed? A lot of you guys recommend the spring steel sheet coated with PEI, I think. It honestly sounds pretty good, but for now I actually want to stick with the glass bed because it's just super durable, it's easy to use and clean, amazing bed adhesion due to the special coating. And I also managed to find one without the, uh, the logo on it. Look at that, super sleek. And another big reason is because later on I actually want to start experimenting with printing in nylon filament and you need a very hot bed temperature for that. And I believe you can only pull that off with the glass beds. At least I haven't seen anybody pull it off with the steel spring beds, um, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. And the last question I get a lot is, can I share my print settings with all of you? First of all, I'm just using Angus's profile from Maker's Muse. Um, I make minor tweaks to it from print to print, but it's more or less the same. I think what you guys are really interested in are the support material settings I use, and mine are definitely not the best ones. The trick is to always just modify it and tweak it depending on the model you're printing. For the Bernie Sanders print I did that turned out fairly successful. I modified those settings three times before I got it perfect. If you guys want it so badly though, I'll have it up right here. Just copy those numbers. But just know though, these are definitely not perfect. I recommend tweaking them based on the model you're printing for the best results. All right, uh, if there were any questions I didn't get to, comment them below. If not, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the part three video in about five days. If you're watching this in the future, I'll put up the video right here. All right, see you guys.